Hello and welcome to this podcast for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're joined by Cinch, who's currently in Madrid for the Publitech event, and it's been an absolutely fantastic uh, event this year. So just before we dive into the things you want to show off today, just tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. Uh, my name's Jerry Metcalf. I'm the Business Development Manager for Cinch EMEA. And I look after the, the copper-based technologies um, outside the Americas, essentially. Um, I look after the, the strategic partners that we have, um, the, the strategic programs that we service, uh, and also uh, push forward um, some of the new technologies, new products that the, the company's working on. Fantastic. Um, I've and been, in, been in the industry yep. about 30 years. I joined Cinch about four years ago, but I've been in the industry 30 years. And um, uh, in, in my spare time, I have an eclectic mix of interests and hobbies from, from gardening, archery, beekeeping, cooking, eating. <laughs> so, oh, that sounds awesome. You, you sound like, oh, do you know what? That sounds like one of those, uh, that not, not, you know, that home, not homesteading. It's that thing where like a... It's a mini kind of version of. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Like a medieval version. It kind of yeah. reminds me of like a 17th century cooking where you've got, oh, mead, that's I'll awesome. Mead, yes. <laughs> something, something tells me you've either owned a sword or a helmet or a shield. Yes, I, I, I have a yeah. longbow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Very nice. That's right. So, connectors are a funny thing because mm. I let's let's be honest. A lot of engineers don't find connectors interesting, despite the fact that they're probably one of the most important components you can use in a circuit. Because, as we all know, connectors are connecting things in and out, providing power, distributing signals and data. Mm. And if you choose the wrong connector, like any component, your board is going to fail. Mm. So. What I'm curious about is what you want to offer or what, we, what you want to show the audience today as a new solution that you guys are providing. So, so to pick up on something you've just said, uh, I, I'd, I'd agree. I think they're perceived as being the weak point of, a, of an ele electronic design often. Mm. Uh, but what we offer with the Synapse technology is actually a, a strength and an advantage in having mm. an interconnect solution in the system. Um, it can be advantageous uh, because we can... Um, reduce the manufacturing times, the manufacturing costs, mm. increase the performance levels over traditional solder style joints. Synapse is a solderless compression technology. Um, so it doesn't have the points of failure that many electrical circuits have in them. Mm. Um, and it's particularly uh, tolerant of high vibration, high shock, high temperature variations, and can help absorb um, some of the variances that the mechanical designers would find within a whole system. It, it also lends itself to um, fault finding recovery of parts. If, if you have a high end chip on a, on, a, on a board, for example, and part of the board has failed in test, you can recover the chip without any risk whatsoever because you, you just have to undo the uh, clamping device, remove the chip, put it onto another board, and you're up and running again. You don't have to risk desoldering it you know, from the board. So it's so you mentioned about it not being soldered onto the board. Mm. Um, um, so just make sure I understand, understand this correctly. This is not, is this a solution, a solution that's similar to those push fits ones where it goes into the hole and then it basically fixes itself in, or is this yeah. different? This is different. Uh, the, the actual contact is a, a tiny um, gold-plated molybdenum wire wound button, randomly wound wire button. But if you can picture um, uh, a Brillo pad, being, mm -hmm. a, being a Brit, you'll understand <laughs> a Brillo pad, in a small hole, Essentially, mm -hmm. you have that bundle of wire in a, in a small hole, uh, a particularly shaped hole. Um, that gives you multiple points of contact, both on top mm. and below the contact and also within the contact. Yeah. So, so you have no risk of discontinuity under vibration. Um, the, the whole system is compressed uh, mm. to, to ensure good contact and low resistance. Um, it's such a simple technology, really. There are so few working parts. There's there's very little that can go wrong, if anything. So mm. it's a very highly reliable technology, which is attractive to the space industry because of they, they, they can't service mm. a satellite mid-flight. You know, they, they so, so, so does that mean you've got like, uh, so are we talking uh, like you have like a male-female part, one part is soldered onto the PCB and then you are making that connection on top? No, you, you would design your PCB with flat pads upon it, sit the synapse oh, on top and then of it, that. And it, and it, Oh, and so, it pushes so, onto the pads. Yeah, so, so if, if you're familiar with the term interposer, some yeah, people yeah. refer to it as an interposer. So it goes either between PCBs or it goes between chips and PCBs or it goes in between devices and PCBs. 
Oh, wow. Uh, and the whole thing is clamped down. So as I and say, it, if, if you needed to mm. service it for whatever reason, be it uh, recovery of parts, uh, uh, be it um, upgrading, um, you know, for example, if you want to upgrade certain portions of your system, you would undo the clamping system, literally take the parts apart, put them back together again, do you clamp back up again. And so, like you say, and, and that's perfect for things like, especially high value chips, where if mm. you don't want to risk, oh, because I mean, like someone like me, the, the kind of circuits I design and build, you know, my chips are never more than $50 a piece. But imagine if you're doing like a really expensive FPGA, it's like 2,000 mm. euros for a single piece. And you don't want to solder that down. Yeah. If, if, you, uh, if you picture some of the space programs, which are made in very low volume, such as Mars Landers. Yeah. Uh, that they may only need three or four devices. They'll have one to go to yeah. Mars, one to keep in the you know in in in, in the, the manufacturing facility for test purposes, uh, you know, one for trials as a mock-up, um, and they'll be typically designing custom uh, CPUs, which are you know six figures sometimes, yeah, you know, mm. five and six figures, and so they they want the uh, confidence that they can recover the device um, if they have to, uh, and mm. uh, and reuse it. Equally, it may be the boards are particularly expensive. So again, it lends itself to um, servicing and repair um, whilst it's on the planet. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. Uh, you know, with, with ease. So, uh, and, and so it, it, it's interesting how like uh, a solution like that is, 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 as you go more expensive and your, and your quantities go down and it's a more high risk situation, you do want to be able to go, well, actually, I need to be able to separate these two modules so that if this module fails, I can carry on using this one. They're not completely uh, sort of like melded, mel melted together, essentially, and exactly you can't right. undo exactly them. Right. Yeah, yeah in, in one application, uh, a space application, um, hmm. one part of the system has to be able to separate without any risk of retention from another hmm. part of the system. So we use Synapse as the interface. There's no, hmm. there's no mechanical intimating of pin to socket or, or a plug shell to receptacle shell, you've got an absolutely flat intimating surface. Uh, mm. And so, so when they trigger the, you know, the separation um, of this device, it literally falls away. And these types of connectors, are, are, are they, or if, if they were used in a space application, are they remateable effectively? Like you can do it, you mm. could have it reconnect multiple times. Yeah, so we, we can vary the configuration of the contact. Uh, the the, the mm. basic configuration is, is the wound wire button only. We can, we can pair that up with a plunger on top, uh, which mm. gives you a more durable, multiple mating type interface. Um, and equally, we can, we can mount it up with a spacer between two buttons and, and give you different heights of mm. device as well. So the thinnest is 0.75 mil. We can go yeah. up to an inch or more if that's, that's what you need. But it kind of reminds me that a solution like, like that would be useful where you want something to come back to that rover to dock, to, to transfer data, to charge, whatever you need to do, ah, to then, then go yeah. back and go. So, so the device I have in mind, that, that's, that's a, a one-off separation where, yeah. where the payload is moving away from the vehicle yeah. And, yeah. and never returning. Yeah. Um, if, if you need something, needed something to redock, uh, then I would probably design a different kind of solution um, ah, right, with spring-loaded contacts. Um, but but, but that solution can be modified for that. Yeah, yeah, in, indeed, indeed. Um, it's... it's um, it's probably used more widely in the defense market for high shock and high vibration type environments. So, so how do things, how do you cope with things like, like, um, uh, uh, well, uh, the welding, what's it called when two surfaces come together and they, they, they weld instantly mm. uh, in, a, in, the, in the presence of a vacuum? I can't if, if, it's if they're similar materials, uh, they, yeah. can, they can do. Yeah, um, is, is, it, is it, oh, so is it, if it's different materials, they then tend not to do that? They tend not to, no, exactly, exactly. Oh, you, right, you so have you have to, to have two identical, I yeah, see. Yeah, but equally with things like metals, if you've got oxide layers involved um, mm, and coatings, mm. that would stop that happening. But with, with so, space, I see. Um, the, the challenges are more around, um, in the case of polymer, outgassing. Oh, yes, yes, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, because under vacuum, there, there are materials within polymers, you know, used in their manufacture mm. that, that will become volatile under vacuum. Mm. Um, equally, you have, you need materials which will be stable, um, uh, you know, dimensionally stable. Yeah. Um, at, Thermal characteristics. Yeah, 70, you've, 80, got this, you've got the sun on one degrees. side, nothing yeah. on the other side. Yeah, huge dead, difference. Cold, dead huge differentials. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and, and the change from one to the other can be fairly rapid as well. Even, even mm. in the launch cycle, you might be going mm. from a couple of hundred degrees to minus 200 degrees in, in a matter of three or four minutes. 
And then after that, when you mm. rotate the craft, back to 100 degrees. Yes. Because you're and, facing and the sun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so, 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 so the Synapse technology is, is, is very stable thermally, mechanically, electrically. Mm. Um, and and uh, we have figures for outgassing levels. Mm. Um, it's impossible to always get rid of outgassing you know, with, yeah. with polymers, but you can have acceptable levels of. Yeah. And again, if the system designers understand what the levels are going to be, they can cater for those. And, and so we know that, so as we've discussed, you know, the, these solutions are great for spacecraft, mm. that kind of thing, and also defense. Where else do you think someone might want to use these connector types? So the heritage of Synapse actually is in the IT world um, some 40 years ago. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, so, so it's, it is a mature technology. Um, mm. It's tried and tested. It's NASA Technology Readiness Level 9. Um, and, uh, oh, wow. but, but its heritage was in, was in server farms. Um, more in the days where they would be looking for putting chips in situ on motherboards in the server farms. And I yeah. think the trend has moved, you know, moved towards uh, having prefabricated boards mm. um, that they could, then, they could then swap out mother and daughter board type arrangements. Yeah. But I, I do wonder with, with the oncoming of, of AI, whether the server farms are going to have to become more adaptable again uh, and expandable. Um, and uh, repairable, in which case Synapse, I think, would potentially return to its heritage. But it was originally, the technology was originally uh, around server farms. So you mentioned about them being used as like uh, for CPU sockets so that, you know, you can do like expensive changes really quickly mm -hmm. without um, facing large costs. Would they be used in things like, uh, so like back planes as well, where you can sort of push things in and then you can tie them down, or would that be like a different solution? Uh, they, they, they are often used to join PCBs, um, mm. either in a mezzanine type arrangement uh, with, with yeah, two yeah. parallel PCBs um, or with a flex jumper in between in right, -angly, uh, yeah, right angled uh, PCBs um, and also in coplanar where the system designer may want to introduce mm. some level of modularity. They, mm. they may have, um, I don't know, a, a daughter board that's concerned with governance of power for example, that they may need to change out, in which case you can yeah. have a Synapse device connecting the two. The, the nice thing about Synapse is it's so low profile, you don't particularly add to the mass and, and height of the PCB arrangement if you don't want to. You know? Ooh, what, what, what kind of profile are we talking about? Uh, down to 0.75 of a millimetre uh, in terms of height. What? So, yeah. Sorry. Oh, hang, hang on, hang on. Mm. Point, point 0.75 millimetres? Yes, yes. Um, I, I didn't think you could do a connector that's... So, sorry, so, so you're talking about mm -hmm. you could have two PCBs separated by 0.75 millimeters, yes. which would be the connector itself. Yes. It's... You, couldn't fit it, you couldn't fit anything under there. So, so you, you have, the, you have the, the PCB, you have the Synapse device, 0.75 mil, you have, then have your chip or your device or another PCB on top of God. it. It's 0 God. It's 0.75 mil. And so, and, and so these are more like grid, these, these are more like grid arrays, these connected, this, this connector type. Sometimes, sometimes they're, they're discrete RF arrays, so, so a mm, signal mm. surrounded by a, a circle of that's shield right. contacts. Yeah. When you talk about a connector that's this small, <laughs> you know, it, you, you've got to see it to truly believe in how, how, how it all goes together and works. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. And, and uh, I think also, when, if you see the device, you'd appreciate the simplicity of the technology. Yeah, yeah. But and, therefore and so you'll it's, see it's, it's inevitably reliable because there's nothing that can go wrong. So if you had like an service. LGA part on top of this, how would yep. you actually keep the LGA part down? Uh, LGAs would typically have something like a heat sink sitting on top, right? Yeah. So, so you'd be pulling down the heat sink. the clamping device into that. So you'd, you'd have a, a, a system of bolts just pulling it down. Mm. And again, there's a graphic in the presentation and, that illustrates that. And, 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 and typically with CPUs, they, which, yep. which are also you know, typically LGAs, yep. um, when you have like a, a motherboard, they use like little pin contacts, to, mm. like little spring-loaded contacts to sort of make contact, like a, like a motherboard, like a, like a, a consumer-type mm. product. Um, so what is it about this solution that's making it more reliable or more, you know, more usable than, than something like that anyway? Uh, there's a couple of things. One is the simplicity of the technology. Yeah. Um, the, the other is the degree to which you can customise uh, the solutions right. and you can you can have combinations of different contact types different pathways different heights also mm. in the same device uh, we, we, we had um, a uh, an application recently where the client had three PCBs three parallel PCBs they needed to transmit signals from the bottom PCD, PCB to the middle PCB 
and then power from the bottom PCB to the top PCB. Yeah. So we ended up with a device about an inch long in the middle with power contacts taking power up through did the second they, needle PCB. Did they do a cutout for the connector? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome! But the, but the middle PCB was oh, thank you. the middle PCB was was uh, carrying signal contacts at a lower height. Oh, so that you, you you you've got one at 0.75 and maybe one at 1.75, and it can like stretch the gap. It was over an inch actually. Yeah, so so more like 30 mil height. Blimey! So between the two, the second, uh, the middle, and the top PCB, they mm. had devices which meant they had to be separate. Yeah, God, that's massive. But that's combining... almost, that's, that's really clever. Mm. These connectors are, are they more like um, something, something that you can effectively buy on Mauser or other distributors, or is it kind of more of a personalised kind of you need this very particular style? We'll make it yeah. for you. It's it's both. Um, we have a range of um, standard stacking synapse yep. connectors, we call them, in distribution right now. Um, they, they tend to be uh, you know, fixed heights and yep. fixed contact layouts, but they tend to be two or three rows of contacts. Um, equally, uh, it's, it's highly customizable, so a lot mm. of what we do on our side of the pond are customized solutions. Then again, yep. uh, we, we are now developing some more standardized mm. solutions around these discrete mm. RF style arrays yeah yeah uh, which you could which you can get you'll be able to get from distribution as a as a standalone mm. um, RF interface or interposer absolutely fantastic so, so we're expanding the technology and the the uh, standardized product offering well I've got um, to say I'm really impressed with these connectors and, I, and I, when I finally got to see it and truly understand what it was actually doing especially when you talked about the stacking that, that honestly blew my mind before we wrap up this podcast I've got one more question for you which is that sorry. for the audience who are watching this video if they want to get involved with these new solutions what would you recommend that they do? Uh, reach out look at our, our website cinch.com uh, um, there's a landing page for the Synapse technology and um, the, the document I would encourage people to look at there is the design guide um, if you were to Google Synapse Design Guide, uh, you'll, you'll find it pretty much instantly. Um, that document takes you through the different configurations, the different heights, the different. It shows you, it tells you the materials that we use. Mm. Um, we we be, we're, we're transparent about this because space system designers need to know about the materials they're introducing into their system. So there's no point having secret materials. Um, it, it gives the uh, you know, design parameters for the PCB, the pad layouts, the pad thicknesses, the pad flatnesses, the pad thickness, you know, the, gold, the, the, the gold coating on the contacts. So we, we you know, give a thorough set of guidelines for how to design the system to use in conjunction with Synapse. Um, and, then, and then we'll configure the Synapse to suit the system as well, depending, as I say, if you need mixed height or mixed signals. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you ever so much for having us here today. It was an absolute pleasure. No problem at all. My pleasure.